guys, it's me, Miss Norris, and in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to share a story of a fabulous woman named Mary Anning. Mary Anning was the first paleontologist, and she discovered many amazing things. In today's story, I will be reading you the story, Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the First Paleontologist. And this story was written in 2020 by Linda Skears, and it was illustrated by Marta Alvarez McGinn's. And if you're ready to hear the story of Mary Anning, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Dinosaur Lady. And here are some, a basket and some fossils. Mary Anning dodged high tides and crashing waves to scour the beach near her hometown of Lyme Regis, England. She filled her basket with curiosities to sell to tourists, like seashells and fossils with fanciful local names like snake stones, which were ammonites, devil toenails, belemonites, and angel wings, petricola falidiformis. I, I'm sorry if I butchered any of those names. Don't come after me, fossils. She scrambled over crumbling cliffs and rocky peaks while avoiding life-threatening landslides. Despite the constant danger, Mary wasn't afraid. She was determined to uncover the area's long-buried secrets, no matter the risk. Dun-dun-dun! So she started out just going out to find things to sell, and she was fascinated by the curious things she found. Mary learned to read and write at Sunday school, but she wanted to learn more. She had so many questions about the bones and fossils she found, and she needed answers. She borrowed books and copied scientific papers. She sketched intricate drawings of her discoveries, and she made notes. Lots and lots of notes. One morning, when Mary and her brother were exploring the cliffs, they saw something surprising. Nestled in the rock was a large eye socket looking right back at them. Look at that. Do you imagine playing outside and finding an eye looking back at you? It's maybe a little scary, but not for Mary. Carefully, they chiseled away dirt and stone to expose a four foot long, four foot long head with a pointed snout, massive jaw, hundreds of teeth. It was frightening. But Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinated. They coaxed workers from the village to help dig it out and carry it home. So they kept digging and what they found was bigger than a small kid. Um, four feet is pretty big for especially for a head and then they convinced other people to help take it the rest of the way to their house. Um, and it was might have been frightening to some people but it was fascinating to Mary. <clears throat> While the men returned to their work, Mary set out to find the creature's body. The cliffs were constantly shifting and sliding. It had to be buried nearby. But where? Day after day, Mary scrambled over the cliffs. Week after week, she searched. Month after month. So when everyone else went back to work, Mary said, you know, I found the head, so the body must be nearby. But because it's near oceans, near an ocean where the tide moves things, Mary just had to keep on searching, and she looked for months. And it seems logical that it would be nearby, like she said. But possibly not. <clears throat> After almost a year, Mother Nature lent Mary a helping hand. The powerful wind and pounding rain from a devastating storm caused several landslides. That doesn't seem like I would be thankful for several landslides. In one night, the cliff's ancient layers were exposed, 
Layers that would have taken Mary years to uncover with her hammer and chisel, something caught Mary's eye. Bones. So the storm made lots of the cliff slide with its rocks, and Mary again spotted something. Bones. And she wouldn't have been able to do that with her hammer and her chisel. So she was grateful to Mother Nature for those rock slides. Boldly, Mary chipped away and uncovered ribs, vertebrae, flippers. Was it a crocodile? Fish? Lizard? No! Mary had discovered a creature never seen before. Was she scared? Nope, not at all. So imagine finding these bones and chiseling them away carefully and you can't tell what it is because it's something that has never ever been seen before. Maybe scary, but not for Mary. But many villagers were. Oop, did I skip a page? Oh, was Mary scared? Nope, not at all. But many villagers were. Soon they were talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich collector who offered to buy the skeleton. Mary hated to see it go, but the money would help the Anning family survive for months. The collector donated, donated it to a Lo London museum and scientists and geologists flocked to the exhibit. They studied it, calculated, debated. They named it Ichiosaurus, which meant fish lizard. The word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. <clears throat> so Mary sold her fossil because it would help her family. And other scientists ended up naming it. But dinosaur wasn't even a thing yet. So they called this an Ichiosaurus, which meant a fish lizard. Could you imagine never ever knowing what a dinosaur was and then to find one? I'm kind of blown away. They made an announcement that shocked the world. Mary's find wasn't just old. It was millions of years old. Their declaration shattered the commonly held belief that the earth was only 6,000 years old. Mm -mm. Also, no one had realized that a species could become extinct until they studied the remains of a creature that no longer walked the earth. So, number one, this discovery of the Ichthyosaurus by Mary made people think, oh, hey, the world is way older than we ever thought. And it had never, ever been a thing that there could be a creature that was on Earth before that wasn't anymore. Something that was extinct was never something that people had thought about before. Mary. While others discussed her discovery, Mary kept exploring and learning. So Mary wasn't satisfied just to find one fossil, one creature that had never been discovered. She kept on looking and exploring and learning more things. Over the years, Mary also found many odd, dark, lumpy pebbles inside skeletons. She examined them reread her notes, studied her drawings. Mary figured out what they were, except it was something a lady shouldn't talk about. So she found a bunch of these rocks inside skeletons, and nobody knew what they were. But Mary looked at all of her notes and thought about the things she knew, and she knew what it was, but apparently it was something that ladies shouldn't talk about for what that could be. I think ladies could talk about anything. But 
Mary was more of a scientist than a proper lady, so she proclaimed these stones, known as bezors, were actually fossilized poop. Geologists sneered. Scientists scoffed. Then they took a closer look and realized she was right. Mary's discovery helped scholars learn more about what ancient creatures ate. So here's a whole bunch of people just laughing at Mary. And then they studied it more and discovered she's right. This is poop. But then it led to more discoveries because now they knew what dino what ancient creatures ate. Because remember, they still didn't have a word dinosaurs yet. Mary also found many long, thin, cone-shaped fossils. They were unremarkable, ordinary, at least on the outside. Curious, she cut one open. Tucked inside was a small pocket filled with a thick, dark substance. Mary was even more curious now. Adding a few drops of water, she turned the substance into... Dun, 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 ink. Mary's discovery proved that ancient aquatic creatures squirted ink to hide themselves from hungry predators. So she found what looks like Christmas tree rocks, cone-shaped rocks. And Mary says, that's not enough that I just found these cool things. I'm going to cut one open and see what's inside. And when she did, she was able to mix it with water and make it into ink and prove that even ancient sea creatures used ink to hide from their predators. That's so cool. When Mary was 24, she made another amazing discovery. This creature didn't have legs or flippers. It had wings. She's only 24. And she's discovering a second creature that has never, ever been discovered before. Mary had unearthed a prehistoric flying reptile called a pterosaur. Around the world, scientists were talking about Mary's incredible discoveries. But they weren't talking about Mary. Not at first. So could you imagine discovering something so amazing Everyone else thinks it's amazing, too. But no one is telling everyone else where they found this amazing thing. No one is giving Mary any credit for finding these creatures at first. Even though Mary could identify a species from one single bone and rebuild entire skeletons like a jigsaw puzzle, she couldn't join the Geological Society of London. Women were not allowed. She couldn't attend lectures or teach university classes or even take classes. So she's found all the most amazing things and they won't even let her be in the club or go to the classes and learn more or teach any of the classes, which she probably knows the most about, because she's a woman. Boo! Let her in. But Mary knew her discoveries were important and would change the way people viewed the Earth's past. And so did many geologists, scientists, and scholars. Because where did they go when they had questions? Straight to Mary's cottage. Eager to learn more, they followed her over the cliffs, even if it terrified them. And it did. So, the, some people weren't giving her any credit, but... All of the people who were given all the credit knew that if they didn't know something, they would go ask Mary, the expert. Just like long-buried fossils, Mary's achievements have slowly been uncovered and shared with the world. Her daring discoveries help form paleontology, the branch of geology that uses fossils to study prehistoric life. And she did all that with a homemade hammer, a chisel, and a never-ending quest to fearlessly keep exploring and learning. 
So she might not have gotten credit right away, but she ended up getting credit in the end. And she did all of this with tools that she made herself. Isn't that incredible? Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Anning, the end. I hope you enjoyed the story, Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the first paleontologist. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider clicking that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. And last but certainly not least, I want to once again say a big huge thank you to the entire Howie family for loaning me an extraordinary collection of books to share with you all for Women's History Month. Happy Women's History Month, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.